Hi, I'm Chris Bishop and welcome to the Small Business Show. Now it's a beautiful late summer's day here. I'm in Maboneng Precinct in downtown Johannesburg. And this used to be all factories around here, but now there's a lot more business going on, including an entrepreneur who's helping to launch other entrepreneurs. Hi, my name is Mark Seftel. I'm the co-founder of Open. We design, build and manage co-working spaces where people can come and for a relatively small fee enjoy the services of a complete office environment um, with great internet, great coffee, comfortable furnishings and most importantly a network of people that they can bounce ideas off and grow their respective businesses. I also am the founder of Mubbing Broadband which delivers the internet into these environments um, which provides speeds north of 200 megabits per second. Well, at any time of the day, there are something like 60 entrepreneurs who come in and out of here and work. What do they do? Well, let's talk to one or two of them and find out. Well, here you are. There's two uh, young ladies. What are you doing here? We're actually uh, our own PR company operating for the space. It's not your average type of workplace at all. But then it also depends on what you want. Why are you in the space? That's also very important. Because a lot of people say that in co-working there isn't that much privacy. Or if you need isolation, then people are kind of a distraction. Why are you in the space? Is it suited to what you are doing and your personality? But also it does sort of accommodate for your privacy if you need it. There are offices where you can close it off and be completely by yourself. Or if you want to get some creativity, you're a bit too stressed, there are other entrepreneurs who have the same problems as you. You know, you can sit down, and have a cup of coffee, chat about it. Good afternoon. How are you? Sorry to disturb you. Chris Bishop. Katla Hotsoko. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Okay. Um, so you're one of the 60 entrepreneurs who comes in here every day. Why did you decide to come here? For one, it's an awesome networking space. And I think, which is, I, I think, a vital aspect of being an entrepreneur. But moreover, the vibe that is here, it's, it's people with the same and mindset. And you've worked in other parts of the world. Um, did you come across this kind of thing elsewhere where you were working? Um, I know co-working spaces and hubs are a recent thing. So I was not familiar with them up until uh, coming, to South, coming back to South Africa. So you wouldn't go back to sort of just an office somewhere? No, this. for one, there the are less overheads, mm -hmm. so this works. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the general vibe here amongst other people? Because you have all kinds of businesses in here working together. What's the vibe between um, the rest? The I other think guys? we're always very alert on who's the newbie, and everybody just uh, wants to welcome you and find out if there are opportunities for collaboration, which I think is awesome. Mark Seftel, thank you very much for joining us on the Small Business Show. Um, you come from a family of medical people, doctors. You decided to go another way. Why was that? Well, I'm the youngest of five, so by the time it got to me, it was, you know, you choose what or exactly what you want to do. And I think also by that stage, they were a bit jaundiced by the impact that doctors can really have on the impact of, of health outcomes. And I went my own way. And uh, you went into the world of uh, broadband and what have you uh, right. when you made your career, IT. Right. Uh, what gave you the idea for this? Because this seems to be your core entrepreneur activity. I guess I wanted to become a super entrepreneur. So not only am I an entrepreneur building these kind of spaces, but I also provide a platform for other entrepreneurs to succeed. And working in corporate, I also found that the inf infrastructure that it allowed did not allow for great innovations. So you have ambitions. I mean, you want to be like a Warren Buffett, a sort of a virgin Richard Branson? Well, uh, not to that extent, but certainly um, provide the platform for, 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 for others to succeed and, and certainly at the same time growing you know, my portfolio of businesses, which are quite varied, which include you know, obviously this, this facility here. Now here we are, we're sitting in the middle. It's quite an unusual place for business. Uh, if you come in here, you wouldn't immediately think that this is a place of work. Just tell me, how does it work? Essentially, it's, it's like a gym for work. So instead of uh, taking a dedicated office space where you sign for three years and you have to fit it out and have your own staff, you can move in here and take a membership. And for 1,500 Rand a month, for starting at per person, you can immediately have the infrastructure you need. But the proposition is not to be a co more cost-effective way to work, but rather a more evolved way to work. And we build quite a strong community and a network, which also helps drive people forward. So but you've got about 60 members. You become a member, and then you can come in any time you can... Um come sit 
here, have meetings, play golf on the floor, whatever you want. Right, exactly right. So you can have access to the hot desking area. You've got meeting, you've got meeting rooms and boardrooms that you're going to use. You've got the, you know, the coffee facilities. You've got fantastic internet printing. So everything that you need to be successful um, is, is made available here for, for not just the startup or the small business, but even some large enterprises might have certain of their staff working out of this space. What kind of entrepreneurs are you getting in here? You know, it's across the board, a lot of tech, um, uh, a, a lot of, um, there's some engineering people, there's some architects, um, but a lot of people in the software, in the software space are using the space. And those, those are your main, your main customers here? Yeah. A lot of people, I mean, still, even though I know this is a, a coming way of working, but some people, will they walk in and look around and think, what is this when they come? Yeah, I think often they have a slightly international flavor, so they've experienced these types of facilities elsewhere in the world. Um, uh, so, yeah, there is, there is that element. But these kind of places, they're still quite rare on this planet. They're right? relatively rare. I mean, in South Africa, we've probably got about 20 or 25 in this kind of genre, which is quite a, a, a lot of open plan, a lot of shared. But in the more traditional co-working spaces, or uh, uh, sort of shared office, there's quite a lot of established players, or rather big players, whether it be uh, Regis, for example, and, and, business, and business Center, have, have quite a lot of, uh, of these spaces. And aside from your entrepreneurs, the people they do business with, how do they take to it? I mean, sometimes you've got a multinational company that's got a 20 floor, yeah. and they come in and look at this, perhaps they will compare the two? No, they love it, they love it, because for them it's a, bre it's a breath of fresh air. Um, they can meet a whole lot of entrepreneurs in one space, and big corporates are also struggling with what's, what's next and, and, and how to innovate. So for them, it's really a thrill to be in the space. And as a result, we entertain an enormous amount of uh, uh, corporates that come and do strategy workshops and, and so forth. So whether it's from Discovery Health to, to Telcom, they all come here and they revel in it. And uh, the, the place itself, I mean, it seems fairly relaxed on this day. It's a beautiful sunny day outside. But there must be, what are the difficulties of running an operation like this? Look, you know, it's like funny, often, often you don't realize the business you're going into. So like, so like the car rental business, they turn out to the insurance business. McDonald's turns out to be a property business. So co-working and collaborative workspaces, it turns out to be the hospitality business. And hospitality has got its own unique challenges. So you've really always got to be top of your game. Facilities always got to be clean. You always got to be, you know, helpful at the desk. So. It's, that was really a quite a big learning curve for us. So now more and more we look to recruit you know, people from the hospitality industry because ultimately that's what we're in. And also the position you're in here, um, I know this is an area of the center of Johannesburg that's right. going under regeneration. Right. I mean, there was a time when uh, the center of Johannesburg it wasn't very popular with business. Um, I mean, and this used to be a factory sometime, right. I believe, beforehand. Right. Yeah. But um, how do you think it fits in with that? Look, I think it's brilliant, and, and we were attracted to building our first uh, co-working space in the inner city of Johannesburg, being, being part of the whole uh, rejuvenation, particularly of this neighborhood, the Maboneng Precinct, um, because we thought it was important to bring fresh blood and new excitement into the city. Around us, we've probably got a trillion rands worth of infrastructure. You couldn't duplicate this anywhere else. So it's part of a global trend of reimagining you know, old industrial areas. Um, obviously, there was a price advantage to getting involved here. We wanted to own our own our first facility. Going forward, we're looking at, at renting other facilities and partnering with other people. So this almost becomes our, has become our business school of co-working spaces. Also, what excites us is outside of these four walls are organizations in the traditional business of manufacture and so forth. And I wanted to bring a, a new type of service economy up against an old established um, sort of commercial, uh, manufacturing and industrial economy. So what are your plans to, to expand? How do you see it in the next five or ten years? What you know, we've here? got very ambitious expansion strategies. You know, we would like to see um, 50, 100, 150 of these being spread across the continent uh, where we partner with, you know, uh, you know either big uh, financial services companies or IT companies or property companies to, to help roll these facilities out and indeed governments and, and, and municipalities. Um, the truth is for us to make an impact, we do need more of these spaces and so large, large spaces. So this is a thousand square meters. 
All the ones that we're looking at now are in excess of two to three, maybe even 5,000 squares. What is it like raising capital for these kind of ventures? I mean, banks, <laughs> I mean... Good question. They're uh, narrow-eyed at the best of times. No, indeed. It was uh, very challenging. Fortunately, uh, uh, both between myself and my partner, we, we put our own money in, so it was our own private equity, so to speak. The banks loved the idea, but they couldn't find a way to support us. Because traditionally, banks will support three-year leases and, and so forth. In, in our case, all we had was a month-to-month -month membership. Um, but now, fortunately, we have moved into a phase of our development three years on where banks are looking at our, at our results and are, and are providing debt. Um, so, yeah, banks, enthusiastic in principle, but didn't really come to the party in the early stages. I mean, it all sounds um, fairly, fairly sort of uh, smooth and successful. Were there any times when you were thinking, well, maybe this is not for me? You know what, it, it was, it's been the most incredible journey. Um, before we even opened, we ran an event here for um, a very large uh, 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 SMCG company. Um, and it was a million rand uh, event. So even before we opened. So we actually opened with a big bang um, and that gave us a lot of enthusiasm and, and optimism. But certainly there has been certain months where you know, the income hasn't always come in and we've had to put more money in. But that's the life of an entrepreneur, you know, you've just got to, you've got to bite the bullet and carry on. You were never discouraged? No, no. It's, it's, it, we have been rewarded time and time again for this idea. And I think it's because we really plunged an enormous amount of, of capital into it. And people can see it and they can appreciate it. So we didn't hold our punches in terms of acoustics, lighting, internet. You know, you can get up to 200 megabits per second here. Faster than probably anywhere in the country, if not the continent. So people said, wow, that takes some courage, and they rewarded us. And one question very popular with our viewers on this program I always like to ask is, entrepreneurs, are they born or are they made? Well, what a big question. Um, I, I, I actually, I can't say, I can't say. Um, I'd like to think you, you can't, you can, I'd actually like to think you can be made into an entrepreneur. Um, uh, I think it's an approach. I think you can, you, can, you can learn certain skills. You can obviously learn from your mistakes. Um, and in my view, what you must learn to do is fail, but fail quickly. <laughs> and then move on and, 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 and dust yourself off and, and move, move, you know, move on to the next thing or reiterate. Hey, Mark Seftel, entrepreneur, and hopefully the launch of many entrepreneurs. Thank you very much for your time. It's a great pleasure. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for for this edition of the Small Business Show. From me, Chris Bishop, in downtown Johannesburg, it's goodbye. <laughs>